This is Daniel Larson attending. UCLA. Brought to you by Larson Leak. So today we're going to be talking about Chinese history. We've we've covered the ancient Texanians, we have covered the Romans, um, and last week I asked you to do your assignment for the Romans. Um, what's going to happen is the assignment that I told you to do next week on the Google Classroom, you'll see that there is an area to submit your eight or nine sentences about the Roman um, person of interest that I asked you to write about. Um, if you'd like to submit it to the Google Classroom, um, please do so. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about Chinese history. So let's get started, all right? So the first emperor of Imperial China was Tao Chen Mai Dek. Um, he was the first emperor of Imperial China. And he invented fortification. Um, so he was one of the most important leaders of China and founded uh, China in the way that it is today. Now, once we get into the communist aspect of China, um, we'll start to talk about that. But back in the days of imperial China, they were not communist. They were more so Buddhist and, and um, Taoist, right? These were these – and Confucianist. Right. So these are old Chinese beliefs before communism. Right. Buddhism and Taoism. Right. So let's talk about the first empress of imperial China. Right. So you had the first emperor. Now, what about the first empress of imperial China? Um, her name was Mi Kuchi Ich. She was a famous empress uh, and she actually invented basketball. Um Modern day basketball is much different from the ancient version of basketball in which Chinese peasants played, um, but she was responsible for coming up with the concept of basketball. Has anybody ever heard of Mikuchi Ich before? Um, yes, Professor. Yes. Um, um, whoever is Please singing, mute your microphone. Please microphone um cheng you might have a little bit of insight since you're from china um if you'd care to explain um all right i guess not all right anyway we're going to move on to the first president of imperial china right so the president's the emperors of ancient China changed over into presidents in the uh, in the 20th century, right? So the first president of imperial China was Han Zhoub, all right? Han Zhoub was the first uh, president, uh, and he was known for selling children to the Germans in World War II. The Chinese needed a lot of money for their war effort in World War II, so they sold a lot of their children um, to – uh, the Germans, right? And that could have been for uh, medical experimentation. It could have been for their war efforts and they needed more soldiers. Um, but he is known for making that um, incredible deal uh, with the Germans in regards to selling children. Yes, Chang-Chi. Oh, so, so sorry. I, I'm walking home from a very important meeting with a, a, a government official. Uh, I, I I want to answer your, your last question about... Uh, Emperor. Uh, Empress uh, Mikuchi Ich. Yes, Professor. He yes. introduced uh, many cultural phenomenon, like a, like a many festival and, and uh, important implementations to our country. Excuse me. Um, can I ask uh, who this uh, government official is? Is it from the U.S. or is it a Chinese government official? Just curious. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Rawson, none of your business. Okay, sorry for the question. I didn't mean to. All right. Um, next, the last person we're going to learn about is the first female president of Imperial China, right? So she was the last president or person in charge of Imperial China. Um, her name was So Horni. Um, she was the first woman to actually eat 6,000 bowls of rice in one sitting. Um, so it was pretty impressive. Oh my god, he laughed. 
Dude, what the fuck is going on? Why isn't anyone talking? His phone to probably him? died. Yeah. His phone probably died. He was outside. I think yeah. he didn't like your answer. He said none of your business. He's fucking terrified right now. He's so scared. Like, <laughs> fucking funny. He thinks, he thinks that the, the, the people following him are from China. Wait, yeah, he just texted me, please leave class immediately. Danger. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and I found out um, because I said, do you mind me asking what uh, government is Chinese or U.S.? And he said, none of your business, Daniel, fucking person. At that point, you kicked him out of the class. And what I find suspicious, the guy um, in the class well, that straight up in the middle of the class said that I do not support Black Lives Matter. And that I'm a communist in front of the entire class to the point to where they kicked both people out. And then at the end of the class, I opened up in front of everyone else and said that I believe that I am being followed. Um, and I, uh, as we know, live in Colorado. And the teacher of the class admitted that the Chinese government is um, collaborating with UCLA over um, how they do their operations. That's, the that's what the teacher told me. And he said the Chinese government is in black Nissan Ultra. Difficulties with the slideshow here real quick. Um, okay. So, back to uh, the presentation um, that I was going over. Um, so let's talk about some of the famous places in China. All right. Um, first, we have the Great Wall of China. Last week, um, we talked about the construction of the Great Wall of China, and it was to keep the Romans out. Right. Um, but another key point of creating the Wall of China um, was to keep the gypsies out. OK, where do people think gypsies are from? Has anybody heard that term before? Uh, Egypt. No, not Egypt. Romania. Yes, from Romania. Gypsies are typically from the country of Romania, right? And it's funny because Romans, Romania, they kind of rhyme and go with each other. Um, but um, the walls were constructed to keep Romans and gypsies out, okay? Um, what about another famous place in China? We have Wuhan Lab, okay? Uh, Wuhan Lab is responsible for producing and introduced the popular COVID-19 virus. All right, so this was the rave in 2019. Um, everybody was catching it because it was very popular, and this was a critical success for the Chinese. Um, so this is obviously the lab where they produced it um, and released their latest version of COVID-19 to the public, right? I loved it. It was awesome. Absolutely. So this is one of the greatest things um, for publicity-wise that uh, China's ever produced. And I know that a lot of people nowadays... Um, do trends where they give each other COVID. Um, but yeah, so this was where the it was produced. All right. Now, what about the f Chinese floating city? So the Chinese and their technology were able to build a floating city um, that moves around um, the entire continental world. Right. And so recently, as of a year ago, um, it was known that this Chinese floating city um, went over the United States, right? And this was the big rave. Everybody was so confused as how to China was able to do this, right? But it was a gigantic balloon. Think of a um, an air balloon, like with the baskets, but 2,000 times bigger than that, right? So the Chinese floating city. Not necessarily a place in China, but a traveling China, all right? So let's talk about China's current president. Okay, so today with the Communist Party that stands in China, we have Xi Jinping Ji. All right, Jinping Ji is the current president of China, and he has two sons and three grandsons. Um, two of his sons um, currently work with the Chinese government, and the three grandsons, it is unknown um, what they do. They could possibly be going to school. Um, they could be working with their father. It is or their grandfather. It is unsure. Now, China's current military, all right, um, there are currently 500 million active troops um, in the Chinese army, 
All right, so that's a lot of people, right? That's more than the population of the United States. Because in the United States, we have 400 million people. But just in soldiers alone, China has 500 million. Um, and these Chinese soldiers were produced from the same lab um, that COVID-19 was produced. So they're genetically cloned um, to be physically and behaviorally um, like their counterparts, right? If you look at this photo up here, um, some of them are not exactly identical, um, but they have all been genetically cloned um, for the Chinese army. And let's talk about China's popular food, all right? Now, has anybody in this room eaten dog or cat before? I'm just curious. Has anybody eaten dog or cat? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I tried it one time. I don't like it. Yeah, ha definitely has a different taste, right? Um, I know that they've recently introduced um, McDonald's is running their new special um, with the dog McCrab, um, one of their sandwiches. Or the uh, the Meow Meow Main from McDonald's. Um, this was in partnership with China. Um, so these are new foods um, that are being transported over to the U.S. that are dog and cat, right? It's becoming much more popular around the world. And last but not least, we have bat soup. All right, so here's a picture of bat soup. It is one of the most popular extravagant foods in China. OK, um, if you are very rich, if you are very wealthy, if you are famous, um, bat soup is what you will usually eat. All right. It's usually held out for the most popular and well-respected figures um, in a nation. All right. So bat soup. Now let's talk about China's extinct species. Right. You've seen a movie with dragons. You've. Uh, read a book about dragons, or when you were a kid, you watched a TV show about dragons, right? Shows and books are based off of dragons. But the archaeological record proves that dragons have actually existed in ancient China. Now, even though dragons existed in ancient China, and they really only ever migrated to Japan and Thailand and parts of Asia, they really stuck to Asia. They didn't go anywhere else. But here's a photo of the one of the archaeological digs uncovering um, dragon fossils. All right, so here's another picture of uh, archaeologists. Ar ar archaeologists, um, that's a hard word sometimes, uh, digging up um, dragon fossils, right? Um, so yet again, there's been 500 different recorded records of dragon fossils being found, right? So let's talk about traditional Chinese. <laughs> Yo, my friends Deuce and Boner, uh, they said they swore uh, they saw a dragon over Baltimore one time. I don't know. Believe them because you know they uh they're, they're a couple of knuckleheads. But so let's talk about traditional Chinese naming. Okay, um, so you've heard the names before from in the beginning, um, but the Chinese typically use pots and pans, and the sound. <laughs> Is our teacher okay? I think like, he has COVID. Up? Yeah, honestly, he's like laughing and shit. I'm sorry. My wife just knocked over a uh, a dresser in my room. She was walking by and knocked it over. <laughs> I was not expecting that, but I'm sorry for being distracted here. Um, the Chinese typically use pots and pans, and the sound of throwing these pots and pans. <laughs> Babe, why are you? <laughs> my glorious king. Yo, are any of y'all watching the uh, debate tonight? I am actually participating in the debate. Professor, do you want me to read the slide? Yes, please. I have to help my wife pick up books real quick. Um, okay. One second. If you could read this slide for me. Clark, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, Clark, mute your mic, please. Thank I apologize. You. My, my wife knocked over a bookshelf, and I, I helped to... Help her. I'll be a few seconds here. If you could That's just okay. read that for me. Yeah. 
Uh, the Chinese typically use pots and pans <clears throat> and the sound of throwing these pots and pans down the stairs to determine the names of their children. I'm yes, sorry, sir. everyone, but because of everyone's attitude, I am, and everyone just acting up, I am leaving. Daniel, can you just yes, calm sir. down, dude? Oh, my God. Uh, oh, uh, my God. Uh, I'm fucking, I'm fucking serious? <laughs> What attitudes, bro? Uh, <laughs> the UCLA um, Diversity Institute has just released a new mandate um, in regards to Black History Month. As you guys know, the uh, the entire month of February is the is Black History Month. Um, so it's important that our class and many classes within the Science Institute um, show up for the uh, Black History Month um, function that they are holding. Um, This is not the first time that I've seen it. Um, it's been Was it on Ultima? Two months. Yes. And it's, okay. it might be a government vehicle. So, yeah. So, actually, currently, um, the the Chinese government um, is sending a delegation uh, to UCLA. It's just for education purposes. Um, I know that they have some pretty important students um, at UCLA at this time. Um, I don't think it's anything related to you. Um, but I know that um, the Chinese government uh, is currently in the area because they are sending students and they are checking out uh, UCLA as a whole. Um, I can't speak on your experience, um, but I know that a few of the Chinese government officials um, who have least uh, shown up in Los Angeles have been in black Nissan Altimas. But um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you're located, Mr. Larson. But um, if you're not in Los Angeles, it may be unrelated. Okay, thank you. All right, no problem at all. Um, other than that, I appreciate you guys being on time, um, and I will adjourn this class. Thank you very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sick of this, sick of cell, niggas hating, then faking, don't wish me well. Cop a pick, fuck a day, take a tell to tell. 1 a.m., hit the cart, we need 50 sodas. 50 feet looking like we gon' rock the shell. Honey, can't on my wrist, cop a bullet shell. Can I over these hoes from a cannon's bell? Put them hoes on a bin, it's a movie rail. Off the book, get the talking like Dr. Phil. Better go down like Tucker.